What is up, crypto hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack everything our Web3 education. Now, if you guys are brand new here and you're interested in everything crypto and metaverse and NFTs, slap a like on this video. It helps the channel get out to more people. And on this video, I'm going to be going over Axelar. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, I did get a chance to meet Sergey and have a good interview with him once upon a time. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go through what Axelar is, why cross-chain interoperability is extremely important for the space and should be focused on heavily and invested in heavily. And then I'm going to be talking about what's coming next with Axelar. So breaking this video up into three, stick around to the end. Now, before I dive into what Axelar is and how cross-chain communication works, I wanna talk about bridging. Now, bridging has been around for a very long time in the space. It's been experimented with in a lot of different ways. But in a nutshell, what this means is if I send one ETH to someone on Avalanche or one of these other blockchains, what bridging was and traditionally is referred to as, it gets locked up in a smart contract, wrapped, and then put onto that other chain. Now, this traditionally was really good in theory. A lot of people liked the idea of me sending, you know, one ETH and then it would get wrapped and then move along on Avalanche as if nothing had happened. What happened with these huge $600 million plus hacks was they would attack that smart contract that had my, my tokens locked up in it before it was wrapped and moved on to the next chain. So that smart contract was just getting bombarded. And this happened with a handful of different bridge interoperability companies. And effectively, that was a very difficult problem to solve, still is. And ultimately, people were tricking the smart contracts to unlock these tokens, and it just became this total mess. Basically, they were permissioned multi-sigs. So multiple signatures were required for it to go through, and it was based on a proof of authority. So that has caused a lot of the issues with the smart contracts because proof of authority was the catch, uh, catch point there where people were spoofing the smart contract, tricking it and trying to do all these creative things for that proof of authority. And it's cost hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in hacks. Now, what Axelar is doing different is very unique they're actually able to move the payload onto that chain. And this is something that I have never seen before. It is innovated, innovative. So now what is Axelar? Now we've talked a little bit about bridging and how people were penetrating those smart contracts and just getting all sorts of squirrely in the middle there with that smart contract. What is Axelar? Now Axelar is a cross chain platform. They're able to effectively carry a payload across any blockchain with one click as an experience from the user. And this is an extreme innovation and step forward in interoperability. And what I wanted to do was dive onto their site quickly, go through some of the key points here because it is pretty technical. This is for developers, but you as the consumer should know what is going on behind the scenes. When you're clicking that button, what's actually going on? So from a high level, when you're interacting with a DAP or a decentralized application, there could be different blockchains that different applications are built on, different versions are built on, and you wanna be able as a user to just fluidly move across it as if there was no issue. When I go to different websites, I don't want there to be any issues, I just wanna type it in and go. And this is a way of effectively doing that seamlessly in the background with different blockchains. So first let's go through three quick use cases and this will help break this down on the front end so you can understand what's going on in the back end. Doing my best to, to break this down for everybody. So the composable liquidity, this is in reference to decentralized exchanges. And when you create a cross chain DEX, or decentralized exchange. If I have liquidity on a decentralized exchange on Polygon and everybody's putting tokens into that liquidity pool on Polygon, I am currently not able to grab liquidity from a bunch of other communities that are on all these other blockchains. What Axelar is giving an example of is that I could now tap into all of those other networks and allow people to provide liquidity into my pool 
on that Polygon or Cosmos or whatever chain it is involved in. So this unlocks a whole paradigm of a bunch more capital into my liquidity pool. And that in the DeFi realm is a huge win because you're opening the floodgates to all that other capital that wasn't just in that one siloed network that you have the current liquidity pool. Next one in good use case here is for DAOs doing cross-chain governance. How does governance work cross-chain? This is a really unique one where effectively if I have my tokens in a proof of stake network somewhere and I wanna be able to interact with a different governance blockchain that's proof of stake, let's say, I can move that payload over to that new chain and help governance there and reverse. I can go back and forth. So that cool little movement is just so complex right now to do. Current status of what that means is I would literally take my ETH, go to something like Uniswap, I would swap it for whatever DAO I'm, I'm trying to govern and help participate in and vote on and uh, pass proposals and so on. I'd have to swap that token, pay fees, go in, do my, do my thing, and then come back, swap it, pay fees, and then I'd be back in Ethereum. All that, and I'd have a much less stack of Ethereum from doing that. What this is suggesting is that it's a fluid transaction that's taking place where I can go across the chain easily into that DAO and participate and fluidly move back without all of these crazy situations taking place. Just a couple clicks and I'm there. And that is a, a big win for DAOs everywhere. So we went through the DeFi case with liquidity pools, accessing capital outside of it, the cross-chain governance for DAOs, which is huge because there's a lot of DAOs starting and a lot of swapping fees going on there that I could just fluidly move across with a couple clips, clicks of the button using XLR. And the last one is cross-chain NFTs. Guys are new here, I don't like NFTs. JK, voted number one NFT channel of 2021 and runner up 2022. This is a cool example here of something like Sandstorm, the company that I'm the CEO of. This is where a builder could create an asset minted on chain as an NFT. And let's say the virtual world that they want that asset to go into is built on Avalanche. And I currently minted that asset on ETH. I'm gonna send it across using one click with Axelar. It's gonna go right over to the Avalanche chain and that world pulls it and populates it. Obviously, there's a lot that goes on there behind the scenes with the world, you know, visualizing and rendering all of those assets in their world. But ultimately being able to send it across those chains has never existed before Axelar. And it's such an exciting example where I'm able to actually you know, have some value associated with it. Let's say I bought it and I wanna send it. It's a really great concept uh, to move, especially in gaming, across all the different chains, all the different games that are taking place on these different networks. It's just a really great way of connecting the fabric. What a lot of people don't think about or even really know about is the fact that these networks and these blockchains have huge communities associated with them. So when a new game developer comes out and they release a, a game, let's say on Solana or Avalanche or one of these blockchains, they're unable to tap into those other networks of people on those other chains because it's very tribal in the Web3 and crypto space. It's literally like those people don't even talk. They're like, oh, you buying some of the, the token that I'm sitting on right now? No. Okay, well, are you buying some of the one I'm sitting on? No. So. It's like this constant battle and everybody should be playing together. And the good saying that Agroed from Splinterlands told me once upon a time, I think it was like NFT NYC 2018. He said, we don't need to be focusing on silos. We need to be focusing on bridges. And this was many, many years ago, but it's cool to see that this is playing out in the cross chain NFT space because moving these NFTs across these different games is gonna be hard, <laughs> very, very hard. So the fact that the uh, Axelar team is focused on this is really exciting and should be exciting for all the developers out there. To recap, Axelar is allowing people to build a one-click experience that is this cross-chain communication. And that is a big deal 
it sounds a little bit more technical than people are comfortable with, but ultimately it's to move any asset across any application, across any different blockchain. And that to me is a groundbreaking movement in the right direction for interoperability, allowing you to move the payload across these different chains. Last piece here is some of the partners that they have. They're partnering with Avalanche, Cosmos, Ethereum, Osmosis, Polkadot, Secret, Moonbeam, Ledger, eMoney, and so many more. Being friends with their team and knowing what they're working on is very exciting. They're gonna be at ETH Denver doing a community event. So definitely check that out. The link to Axelar will be in the description below. Now, if you are still lost as to what the cross-chain communication platform does, definitely check out their documentation. They have a grants program and just learn about how this stuff works. You don't have to be a developer. You can literally just learn what's going on. They do have a token, not financial advice whatsoever, but you can definitely check that out. It is really, really cool to see these guys crushing it. And I'm gonna be following this project very closely over the next couple of years here, because I do think that they are on the right track because whoever cracks the code of interoperability, even in gaming alone, you're looking at a multi-trillion dollar opportunity over the next decade or so. So definitely follow this. The link is in the description. If you guys are brand new here, slap a like if you like this video. Be subscribed with that notification bell on. And I will see you on the next episode of Hack Crypto.